Welcome to my practical malware analysis. Here we're going to be doing lab 0 dash, sorry, 01 dash 1. So, first thing it wants us to do is it wants us to upload it to the virus total to see if it can be found. We're going to be using the DLL and EXE for this lab, so let's go ahead and do the DLL first. It was just scanned 8 hours ago, we can always reanalyze it. It will pull the appropriate hash. Just like we want it to. And it actually should have a fairly high detection rate. While it's doing the DLL, I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the EXE. Again, it found the appropriate results. It should be some type of malware or Trojan. 28 out of 64 found it. You can scroll through it to see which antiviruses. You can look at file details. Okay, so that was the first question. Second question is, when was it compiled? Well, the nice thing with using like virus total or a tool like that you can actually see the timestamp it was done 12 19 2010 if we wait till the exe is done we should also be able to see when this was done so we just got to give this some time okay so this one has 32 out of 58 found it. Again, it's some type of Trojan or malware. File details, we can see that it was also created a little bit after the DLL was. This was created at 416 and 38 seconds. This was 416 and 19 seconds. So time is taken care of. I'm going to close both of them. Now we can start looking at were they packed? Okay, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead. First thing is, are there any files that are obfuscated and or hidden? So let's go ahead and move the DLL. You'll notice it does not show it. Let's do the EXE. Again, it did not show it. So there are no indications that this was packed. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the imports and exports. We'll look at the dependency walker for that. If we start looking at here we can start looking at the imports, great process. We can actually go through and we can drill down on the DLLs. But honestly the DLLs shouldn't yield anything interesting. The EXE however should. When we look at the kernel 32 we can see things like a find next file, we can look at find next find first file, copy file. So that gives us some kind of interesting thing to look at. Create a file, create a mapping. So that's interesting import exports. So again with the DLL we found things like create process and sleep. And uh, we also looked at functions for like WS232 which that was at network connectivity. So let's go back to the DLL. This will give us network connectivity. This lets us create process. Dependency walker, again, that WS2 underscore 32, that socket, gives me thing, uh, ideas like it may be uh, uh, doing network connectivity. Question 5 is examine certain files. 
I actually do not have it. This PC is not infected, so kernel with the uh, L is, has not been replaced with kernel with the number 1. So, are there any other files indicators? We'd be looking at key DLLs to kind of see if those DLLs are infected or not. And we'll notice that they're not. Okay, what other tools can we use? Well, let's do uh, Bindext. Bintext will let, let us look at the, the DLLs. We notice there's an IP address. So, again, this was specific to uh, this class, or to this book. Uh, normally, this would be a internet routable IP address if this was regular malware, but this would let us know where it was going. Last question is, what would you guess the purpose of these files are? The DLL would be some type of maybe uh, backdoor, remote trojan, rat, uh, callback function, and the EXE uh, would probably be to install or to run uh, a specific file and or to run uh, this DLL. All right, that actually is chapter, sorry, lab 1-1 in a nutshell. If you have any questions, have any comments, please let me know. Thank you.